Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is May 8th. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and anybody enjoying and celebrating Mother's Day around the Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to take a look at this system diving through Oregon into Southern California. We've been watching this system for a few days now and you can see all the cold air associated with it. That's going to keep us unstable through Western Washington, Southern BC and on in through Eastern portions of Washington, Oregon, Idaho and Montana as well during the day today. You can see it's going to be tough to come by any sunbreaks there in western Oregon though during the day. Western Washington, we've seen some sunbreaks here already, but there is going to be a lightning chance. Uh, these storms are not going to be overly strong or anything. The shear is very weak, so it'd likely be one strike and done type of thunderstorms. Maybe some small hail associated with them, but we'll take a look at that coming up here. We'll take a look at the extended as well. Looks like a system's going to continue drop down out of the north here and continue to keep us chilly through the end of this week. There is a little bit of hope for this weekend warming up here as that next system kicks out through the weekend. Though we'll take a look at that in the extended. We'll also take a look at some ensemble runs and these ensemble forecasts and different parameters that they show. And it gives a good idea of the uncertainty of looking into the extended in one of these, any one of these models forecasts. We'll take a brief look around the rest of the country as well. Some severe weather across Tornado Alley and it's that time of year. And there's some extreme critical fire danger there for New Mexico portions of Texas. We'll take a brief look at it as well. Taking a little bit look closer look at the visible satellite imagery here you can see why it's going to be tough to come by sunbreaks for western oregon western washington a little bit better here some places are going to have a not a very bad day today there's going to be some sunbreaks but there will be some showers building up here through the sound during the afternoon as we get some of this daytime heating keeping us unstable now this is for albuquerque long duration period of critical fire weather there's some really severe conditions down there I saw some historic fire danger in the wording yesterday. So heads up if you have any concerns down there. This map kind of shows where this exists all the way into Southern California portions of Texas, New Mexico. If you have friends or family, if you're traveling, just be aware of that. Now, looking at the general thunderstorm threat, you can just see that that includes Everett South through much of the Pacific Northwest, kind of excluding Eastern Washington a bit there in portions of Northern Montana and Idaho. Uh, day two kind of leaves out to much of western Washington, continues that for western Oregon, eastern Oregon, though, and northeast Washington. There is a tornado threat out there for Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin tomorrow, mainly in the evening. So heads up for that if you're traveling. Day three, you can see this thunderstorm threat kind of dives down out of the area. And we may reintroduce a thunderstorm threat later on through next week across the Pacific Northwest again with that cold upper level low that I'm about to show you here in a few moments as it drops down into the region. I'll probably be out chasing Wednesday, and this is for a Thursday here. Pretty good system's gonna eject across the Northern Plains and come into some moisture here. So I'll probably do some live streams and I'll probably do some Q and A's on when I'm on the long drive out there. So checking out back to the Pacific Northwest, SeaTac 10 degrees below average again yesterday. So this is, you know, this is pretty unusual to be this cold this time of year, as you can see by May 13th, or actually by May 11th, we're at 66 degrees. By the end of May, SeaTac averages 69 degrees. And you can see some pretty good rainfall totals the last three days for SeaTac there. And check out some of these record highs. We can get in the upper 80s at this time of year. And even mid-May, we can hit 90 here in Seattle, as we've done in the past. But you can see that green line here making marking our average temperature here. And then the average the, the actual temperature we got, sorry, it was about 55 degrees the last two days, well below normal. So We'll see how long this is going to last here when we look at the extended here in a moment. This is for today. You can see the instability. Look at that cape just kind of build up as the sunbreaks are going to destabilize the atmosphere across western Washington. And the cold air aloft associated with the system diving in through northern California and Oregon is going to keep them unstable through the day today. And as we go on in through Monday, you can see that instability again build up with the daytime heating across the region here. So we'll continue to watch that as we go. We're going to take a look at the forecast radar here in a moment but this is the her showing that lightning threat around the region you kind of see the scattered nature of it but it has been highlighted an area in the kitsap peninsula kind of east of the olympic mountains there and kind of down through tacoma and uh, olympia so we'll see how accurate it is with that during the day today here's the her the actual composite reflectivity forecast so if you're looking at the doppler radar this is what you may be expecting you can see that area of showers developing out there by shelton uh kitsap peninsula as it moves down towards uh, Tacoma, Olympia, and you can see these showers moving down through Oregon, Northern California with that upper level low spinning there. And you can see some showers even through Northeast Washington today. So there may actually be a thunderstorm threat up there today too. I don't, the SBC didn't show that, but there is that chance. Now going through the day Monday, you'll notice how we 
pick these showers up again across much of the area going through the day tomorrow. So a lightning strike can't be ruled out through much of the Pacific Northwest tomorrow as well. Now, checking a look at the European, let's see what it says about our lightning chances through the day today. You can see that scattered nature as well. You can see it highlights kind of that area, Kitsap Peninsula as well, just like the herd did. So heads up, eyes on the sky today. If you see those dark clouds rolling in, you know, you might get that stray lightning strike or even some small hail with one of these showers. Now, this is looking at the European model here, the 12Z. This one is just running here, so I just updated it to make us get the most up-to-date information. You can see our trough digging out through the area today, leasing us in that unstable condition through the day. And then you'll see the next system diving down out of the north here. And this has got some cold air with it as well. The mountain snows get going again, bringing a front through, it looks like Thursday here. And you can see that spreading snowfall all the way into the Rockies. And there goes that system. It's going to eject out over the northern plains on the day Thursday. But yeah, we're going to remain chilly through the end of next week. But there is hope for the weekend as we go through here that system kicks out quickly and maybe this will bring when you get a system out over the gulf of alaska it can bring some brief ridging and we can warm up a little bit or if nothing else we'll at least be on the warm side of this low pressure system instead of having the low pressure right over us and keeping us cooler so we'll see how that works out we'll check out some of the ensemble runs here briefly as well here is the european the 12z run here i'm going to update this make sure we've got the most recent information there's our trough hanging around the Pacific Northwest. And then you can see the next one coming down through midweek into later next week, takes up shop over the Pacific Northwest as well. And a little bit of ridging tries to build in there. So we'll see how that goes as we get towards the weekend. I want to get everybody's hopes up yet, but maybe we'll warm up a little bit by next week. We'll have to see. The GFS, let's see if that agrees with the European or not. A good agreement on that system diving down midweek. And look at that, build some ridging in there Saturday, Sunday. So maybe we'll be in business there before another trough moves through next week again and kind of hangs out for a while. And this ridging over Alaska would kind of keep us in this troughy position here going through next week. But that's getting too far out there to have any kind of, you know, uh, that wouldn't mean much right now. So looking at the Canadian, shows that trough digging down as well. So yeah, pretty good agreement there. Then the Canadian tries to build some ridging here. But you can see the gradient still pretty tight. And we've got this Gulf of Alaska trough going on here. So we're probably going to be getting clouds and precipitation in a scenario like this. So we do not have good model agreement on the weekend yet. And uh, typically we need a few more runs of a couple more days to try to start to pinpoint any kind of nice weather coming up at that range. Mm -hmm. This is the GFS ensemble run. You can, this goes out, what, 15 days. And you can see we remain chilly all the way through Saturday, really. Then we warm up a bit there. So much more towards normal the following week, potentially even a couple days above normal. But we'll see how that goes here day by day. Here's the European. This goes through Thursday and Friday, well below normal temperatures. Spokane, well below normal temperatures. Eugene, well below normal. Pendleton, you guys get the idea there. Now, this is another way to look at the temperatures here. Seattle, Tacoma, this is the European. Uh, the mean is the green one here. The, so the mean is an average of all these ensemble runs. Each one of these 50 is an ensemble member. And each one of these 50, we take our initial conditions as we think they are, and we tweak them a little bit, and then we let that each individual ensemble run run out. And you can see there's pretty good agreement on the highs and lows the next few days. General great agreement that we're going to be well below average temperatures here. The control run is the blue line here. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, the control is the blue line here. And this is the initial conditions as we think they are ran out. So you can see the difference between the control and the mean. This gives you a really good idea of highs and lows that you can expect as we go through later next week. And you can see as you get further out in the forecast, you start to get a little bit more disagreement, but generally a pretty good, a pretty good agreement relatively. Now, this is a kind of different way of looking at it. You can see the initialization of these model runs. So this would be yesterday morning. This would be last night. And you can kind of see that it looks like we're going to warm up as we get through mid-May a bit. And that's just a little bit closer to normal. It would actually still be a bit below normal. But you can see just how chilly the models have been saying for a while we're going to be during this period, and they've been generally right. And this looks like it's going to continue on through at least until this weekend here. So if you want to go back, you can see May 7th, May 6th, May 5th, May 4th. So you can see this all the way back five days and you can kind of see what the model predicted five days ago, four days ago, three days ago, and so on. You kind of get the idea there. 
So it kind of paints a picture on what kind of variability is coming in with each run. This is precipitation, same general concept here. You can see it's trying to highlight this the last few days, May 7th, or actually the night of May 6th there, it kind of highlighted a little bit of a rainy period with that frontal system that's going to be impacting the area with that trough that moves down out of the north here, mainly Thursday night. You can see it's kind of highlighting this area for precipitation, the last three model runs here. Now, this is another way, this is another one here, total cloud cover. So basically, you'll see that system diving down out of the north, pretty much cloudy, 100% chance of clouds for SeaTac. Virtually all model, the ensemble members agree with that here. And you can see some sun breaks just before and just after there too. But you can see a lot of variability, 100% versus 2%. So there's a lot of variability in these ensemble individual ensemble runs and then you go down here and you look at the mean so you can look at any given day and kind of say oh 50 50 chance for friday at 06 z which would be thursday night of having clouds for example but look at this through wednesday night through thursday night really good chance of a cloudy you know cloudy skies for seattle this would be good for like checking out uh, lunar eclipses or if you want to know just how sunny it's going to be for example just kind of a general information there this is 500 millibar heights, which is 18,000 feet, showing the trough position that we're in now. And then general agreement between the control and the mean that we're going to crawl back out of this and at least bring some, you know, at least higher heights. We're not going to be in as a deep trough as we go through next week here, according to the European, then potentially another trough here. But the control has a much deeper trough than the mean does. Not much deeper, but somewhat deeper. And you can see that disagreement. And this is because we're getting further out into the forecast here. This is 850 millibar temperature, pretty good agreement relatively all the way out through what this is May 12th here. And so it's pretty good agreement relatively speaking. And you can see some of these individual ensemble runs. Some of these have some pretty warm temperatures at 850 and some have some much colder temperatures. So we have great disagreement into the extended. That's what it will tell a forecaster as you're looking at these charts. Now, so yeah, so around Western Washington might not be too bad today. You might get some sun breaks, but you might see some dark clouds moving in depending on where you are. So, you know, it's kind of a wait and see type of day to see where these showers bubble up. There is a lightning chance, but for Western Oregon, you're going to be in clouds much of the day today. And we're going to continue this lightning threat on through the day tomorrow and just general showery pattern until this next system. This is probably it up over here. Alaska is eventually going to drop down and affect us on in through mid and late week. And then there is a potential for a better weekend next week. And maybe on into next week, we'll get some more temperatures closer to average, which are very pleasant at this time of year, as you saw mid and upper 60s through May for Seattle and even warmer. By the end of May, Portland's going to usually be up into the low 70s. So there might be some nice weather around the corner here, but we still have to go through a big trough next week. So hopefully you guys are enjoying your day. Um, click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.